comes as the nation mourns the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The 87-year-old passed away Friday from pancreatic cancer after serving on the court for 27 years. She was a fierce champion of women's rights and is considered a liberal icon to many Americans. However, her death shifts the court's ideology further to the right, with three liberal-leaning judges and five conservatives remaining on the bench. President Trump has vowed to nominate and confirm someone to take Justice Ginsburg's vacant seat before the election, and that move could reshape the Supreme Court for decades to come. Earlier, White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany and Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar addressed this on CBS This Morning. The president is clear in saying that he will be nominating someone to the Supreme Court. Um, in fact, 29 times in history, a president in their last year um, of their term has, in fact, nominated someone and been considered by the Senate. So the president will be following that precedent, and we believe that voters uh, will be supportive of this move as we move forward and they see the quality of our nominee. We already have two Republican senators that disagree with this. And there could be others. So I'm not going to concede that we have to look at what our strategies are until we know that they are all going to basically sell out to Mitch McConnell. They are independently elected but in their states. They made a pledge, basically, last time. Many of them said this should be regard to the election and who picks. And let me add one more thing. If you look at history, the only time that someone has died a justice this close to the election, you have to go back to Abraham Lincoln. And that wise leader, what did he do? He said, I'm going to wait till after the election to nominate someone, and we will then have a vote after the election. All right, for more on this, let's bring in Ben Tracy. He's following the latest from the White House. So, Ben, uh, can you start by taking us through the latest developments on this? What is the president's timeline to fill this vacant seat, and who are some of the top contenders? Well, the president is not wasting any time. He says he has narrowed his list down to about four or five people. It will be a woman, he has said, so four or five women on that list. And the president just said this this morning, just moments ago, he said that he will name that person on Friday or Saturday. Uh, he said that he wanted to give a couple of days for mourning uh, for services to take place, but then he will name his person. As for some of the top contenders, uh, there are at least two that are getting a lot of talk. Uh, the first is Amy Coney Barrett. She is 48 years old. She is a uh, very well thought of by conservatives for her strong anti-abortion views, uh, as well as Barbara Lagoa. She's also a appeals court judge uh, who has been getting a lot of talk because she's a Cuban-American from the critical swing state of Florida. Uh, the president was asked this morning if politics will play any role in this, uh, and he said, well, it's hard to see how it won't, but he said that mainly this is about the person. But if the president wanted to perhaps lock down some more votes in Florida, perhaps somebody like Lagoa could be his pick. But most people at this point think that Amy Coney Barrett has the upper hand here, mainly because she's already been vetted. She's already interviewed with the president himself because she was considered as a top candidate, at least, for the seat that opened up uh, a couple of years ago when uh, Justice Kennedy died, and that seat went to Brett Kavanaugh. Ben, you mentioned the president uh, earlier this morning um, making some news about this. Uh, I find it interesting that when he was asked about uh, Barbara Lagoa as a possible US, U.S. Supreme Court justice, the president, in an interview that he gave just moments ago to Fox, uh, basically says he doesn't really know her. He knows that she's Hispanic um, and that she's from Florida. Uh, or I don't even know if he said she is from Florida. He just said Florida. We love Florida. Um, and the reason I ask this is because it strikes me that the president may not at all be familiar with the judicial record of some of these people that he's proposing. He's relying on folks like Mitch McConnell um, and others who will then sort of shuffle these individuals up to the president essentially for a, a stamp, a stamp of approval. Yeah. And that is how this has worked. You know, the president uh, often talks about the list of nominees that he has put out there, a list of people that he would consider. Uh, those aren't necessarily lists that the president sits down and makes himself. He's getting a lot of input from outside groups. He's getting a lot of input from very conservative Republicans. But, but you mentioned kind of what he said about Lagoa in that I've never met her, I don't know her. That's why the smart money is still on uh, Amy Coney Barrett, because he has met her. He does know her. He's more familiar with her record. And she is well thought of by conservatives. So I think if you had to put money on somebody this morning, that's who you would. And, Ben, Republican senators are facing sharp criticism for refusing to confirm President Obama's Supreme Court Justice Judge Merrick Garland during the 2016 election. Uh, 
I mean, I know the answer to this, but what's been the response to the hypocrisy? Uh, they don't view it as hypocrisy.